What's going on out there, tech fans? Today, we're going to talk about five simple things that'll actually keep your PC running better and probably a few things that you might have missed when you built your PC. Now, for those people out there who are total PC experts, you built a thousand PCs and you know everything about that, you probably don't have to watch this video. You can watch just to be a totally cool person, peace out. But this is for mainly for a lot of people who aren't totally computer savvy but would still like to have a few tips. Now, the things I'm gonna be talking about are things that I've seen repairing people's computers and upgrading their computers and seeing some of the mistakes that they do that could have actually kept their PC running a lot better. So let's talk tech. Did you just build yourself a brand new PC? Or did you just upgrade your old PC, but find you're in need of a Windows 10 key? If that's the case, your CD key has you covered. And buying, it's never been easier. All you do is go to the Your CD Key website, find the Windows software that you want to buy, put it into your cart, enter the code TOT20, apply the code, save yourself some extra money, and as soon as you complete your purchase, the Windows 10 key will be in your inbox. There's no problems, it's really easy, and all keys are guaranteed to work, so you don't have to worry about losing your money, and you'll have a valid Windows 10 key to get your unit up and running. Okay, so the first thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is the BIOS on your motherboard. Now, this is really going to apply, especially for people who have older motherboards. A lot of the newer motherboards come and they automatically detect everything and set it up for you pretty good. Um, the only thing that probably some of the people that are, are with newer motherboards are gonna to wanna to pay attention to is your memory, making sure that if you have XMP profiles, you have XMP one or two or whatever it is, you have that set. But the main thing you really want to do for anybody out there who's never have done this before is really when you start a computer up, you're either going to hit F1 or delete and you're going to go into your BIOS. Now, inside your BIOS is going to be a lot of different settings. But what I've seen a lot of times, especially on people with older motherboards, is they don't have the hard drive setting, settings right. They don't have it to, to the correct settings whatsoever. So you wanna make sure that you set everything up in your BIOS correctly. If your memory has XMP, you wanna make sure that you engage that. If the memory speed is wrong, you may want to change that. You wanna make sure that you have every single one of your hardware things inside of your BIOS to match the hardware that you're having. That's the really a really important thing that I see a lot is when I'm going to work on someone's computer, I'll go into their BIOS and I'll see, oh, well, you know, they have their hard drive setting to, you know, for old hard drive stuff. They don't have it set to, to, to the latest standards or anything else like that. So their computer's really not running up to par. So the first thing that you want to do, especially if you have an older motherboard, or even for some of you people who have newer motherboards, is just make sure that you go into your BIOS, like I said, by hitting delete or by hitting F1, sometimes it's F2, you know, it's rare, but they, it does happen. Go into your BIOS and just make sure that everything inside of your BIOS matches. That's what you really wanna do. AHCI for your hard drive settings, you wanna make sure that you have that set so that you're getting the best transfer speeds and everything on your hard drives. You wanna make sure that if you have, you know, any type of parts that are in their M1 drives, anything whatsoever, that everything is set up completely correct in your BIOS. This is something really easy to do. You just read your manual, check out the different parts you have in your system, and then make those changes and your system will run a lot better. Now, the second thing that you can do, and a lot of people don't realize this, and even I didn't really realize this, is when you're using Explorer and you know all kinds of different stuff online, especially when you use Google Chrome, this is the worst one of all. The more windows you have open, the more memory and resources are being used. So if you're opening lots and lots of windows, especially like, uh, like I said, with Google search engine, um, whew, Chrome is the worst. It just sucks up resources. What you're gonna wanna make sure that you do is you're gonna wanna make sure that you go into all your settings of, of your windows 
and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you clear out all of the cash. Now, some things you might wanna keep. If you go in and you just wipe out all of your cash completely, it's going to wipe out all of your bank information, anything that you're logged into. If you don't care about that stuff and you don't mind re-logging into a few things, then the best thing to do is just totally, completely clear out the cash. Just get rid of it all together and you'll be a lot better off. You'll also notice that your system starts running better. I had a lot of windows open. I'll admit I'm crazy. I look at a lot of stuff online. I literally had like 40 or 50 windows open and my system just started clunking and clunking and clunking and clunking. And friends of mine's like, hey man, you do realize that uh, that old Chrome is uh, sucking up resources? And I was like, I went and looked and I was like, holy crap, it really is. So that's another really easy thing that you can do is just whatever, you know, whatever search engine that you're using, whether it's a Bing or whatever, whatever search engine you use, just make sure that you occasionally go in there and make sure you clean all of the cash. That way you're good to go and your system doesn't have those resources being occupied. Now, the third thing, and wow, honestly, this is probably the worst one, honestly. A lot of people, they tend to put their computers on the floor. I don't. I don't recommend that you do either if you have a choice. Why? Because your computer sitting on the floor picks up all that crap and dust and dirt and everything else. And guess what? It sucks that right into your system, right inside your system. So many people's computers, and they bring it to me. I look at it. I'm like, have you ever cleaned out your fracking computer, bud? And they'll be like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, your fans are covered in three feet of dust. They're barely moving. You've got fan and dust all over your CPU cooler. I mean, all this stuff, you really need to at least, at least every couple of months, maybe more if you have your PC on the ground, is take your computer outside into your backyard or somewhere and clean that sucker out. If you can get somebody who has actually a compressed air gun at a, at a shop, that works amazingly well. Some of the air can stuff, it will work. It'll just take a little while longer. Having somebody who has a compressed air little canister or something that can blow that out really hard though, that could be a really good friend. It is something you should definitely do. And you might say, well, what does it even matter? Well, when all of your fans have caked up dust, your CPU coolers got caked up dust, the airflow in your system isn't going to be going as well as it should. And let's just face it, the cooler that your system runs, the more stable it's going to run and the longer it's going to run. So why not just take that simple time to clean out your computer and make sure that it's running good because it's a really simple, simple thing to do. You clean it out, blow all those fans off, you'll notice all of a sudden your CPU temperature's dropping, your video card temperature's dropping, you'll be like, oh man, wow, I should have done this a long time ago. And yeah, you probably should have. Okay, now, the next thing is our drivers. A lot of people will just install everything on their computer and they'll keep playing and they'll keep going and they won't think about driver updates. Now, this isn't going to like be like a total, you know, miracle cure for everything, but you'll find out sometimes when you're running your computer that you'll come across some random thing where a game won't play or something won't load and you're going, what the hell is going on here? Why won't this load? And sometimes, the DLL library just get whacked in the Windows environment and all of a sudden something can't you know, grab itself from its DLL library, which is a direct link library, over some weird driver issue somewhere that just isn't up to date and you know works with the current hardware you're using. So make sure you go through and check your system every so often and check all your drivers. Make sure you have the latest audio driver. Make sure you have the latest video driver. Make sure that you have all of the latest stuff for everything on your system. If you're running an Intel-based system, make sure you do all the upgrades for an Intel-based system. Everything, you know, I'm serious. Update everything you can. Hard drive information, speed transfer, anything that you can upgrade to the latest drivers and the same thing if you're using an AMD motherboard. Make sure that you have all of the latest and greatest drivers that you can get into your hot little hands on your system. Now, with video card drivers, you're going to notice that a lot of the stuff that you're doing is not going to really improve older games. I know, right? You're going, why the hell is this not? And this is this. 
When video car companies release really update their drivers, it's usually to accommodate the latest games that are coming out and to make sure those are running perfectly. Um, you know, they're not probably too worried about the original Far Cry at this point. You know, we're on, what, Far Cry 5 or 6 now? <laughs> way up there. So, you know, they're looking to make the latest game run better. So, upgrading, you know, the drivers on your video card may not make older games run better. In fact, in fact, this happens sometimes, you may notice that for some game that you really love, all of a sudden you update it and you're like, wow. I was getting so much better performance on my last driver. Well, luckily, you can go in and change that driver back to the previous one. But that's really the only driver that's going to have that kind of effect on your system and what you're doing. Any other drivers that you guys are using out there, you want to make sure they're up to date so that they work with all of the hardware and software that you're trying to run on your computer at that time. Now, the last but not least thing that you guys can do on your computer, and this isn't really anything to do with like software type stuff, but honestly, I feel that pretty much the best upgrade that anybody can do to their system is upgrading the memory. Okay, that's it. Windows 10 will work on eight gigabytes of memory, but it's going to do it just barely. 16 does it a little better, but 32 gigabytes of RAM right now, if you're a person who does a lot more than just gaming, seems to be a really sweet spot. Yeah, there are some motherboards out there that take 64 and 28. They have all these big, huge workstation motherboards, but most people who are just like editing videos and, and, and you know working in light programs and stuff on their computer, 32 gigabytes of RAM will really be the sweet spot. And what you're going to notice with this is that no, it's not really going to make your system, you know, super duper faster. It's not going to really make it boot any faster. You're not going to get more frames per second in your games. What you're going to see, however, is that all of these tasks just start to run better. Because the more memory you have, that means there's more things that you can store in virtual memory as well. So when you're accessing a lot of programs, you're doing a lot of things, the more memory that you have in your system, the better. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't play games whatsoever, you just surf the internet and that's really all you do and do some email and stuff, hey, your eight gigabytes of RAM will probably be okay for you, but still upgrading would be better. But for those people out there who multitask, which is me and probably a lot of you out there, doing a simple memory upgrade will make your system run a lot better. Also, I know there's plenty of people out there who have lots of tips and tricks. I invite you guys to leave comments down in the comment section. Let us know your secrets. There's always more room to learn for everybody. I'm always constantly learning. I learn something every day. I hope you guys are too. It's part of growing it and being, you know, in life is learning. I mean, learning stuff to me is fun. You figure something out and you're all, oh man, I didn't know it was like that. You just had a major head fart you're like oh my god that was I, I didn't know it was like that you know so education is great for us all and I'm always willing to learn from you guys as well I am not the you know know-all be-all of all things computer I'm not the MCP the master control program either uh, who's a master control program anybody like Tron this guy does <laughs> but anyways that's today's video, folks. Those few things that I've told you guys, though, are really, really simple things, though, to help keep mainly your computer running good at all times. And if you want to just do something simple that's going to make your computer run better, upgrading the memory is always the simplest, easiest thing to do. People have said that memory prices are going up, but honestly, I've seen so many deals on memory out there lately that you can get good memory for a good price. Now, sure, if you want the very fastest stuff that there is, you want 4,000 megahertz, you want RGB, you want this, you want that, you know, you're gonna see the memory prices go up. ECC, high speed, RGB, all these things are going to increase the cost of your memory. But I will say this, when you're out buying memory, I really would, if you're a gamer especially, look for memory that has an XMP profile. Because XMP profiles guarantee that your memory will run at what it's supposed to run, and all you gotta do is go into the BIOS, like I told you in the beginning of the video, change a certain thing, and boom, you are totally up and running and going again. So, 
Um, that's it. That's today's video. I thank you guys for watching. Um, peace out. Um, if you like my style and you like my videos, and hey, hit that sub button and turn on that notification bell. And uh, I will see you guys back here for more tech videos. Also, um, if you guys want to try Amazon Prime for free for 30 days, it helps keep the channel around. I have a link down below. Just click on it, try it out. It helps us both, keeps me around, gets you some free stuff. And if you got a single dollar, you can support me on Patreon. So peace out. We'll see you guys back here on Tech of Tomorrow for more tech.